Hi, my name is Lou Wilkinson from far away Indiana, and here's another uh, short video on Linux music for beginners. Uh, we try to show you that any reasonably intelligent, marginally curious person has uh, access to pro quality, just killer tools uh, in a Linux environment. Uh, and a series of short videos to show you just how easy uh, it is to get started using them. Okay, today we're going to look at Ardor, a pro quality uh, digital audio workstation in a Linux environment. Uh, it, this thing rivals anything you can find on Windows or iOS. This will be the most basic, basic overview, how to set up projects, uh, how to look at uh, ad tracks and look at what's coming into the track and how the tracks feed into other things. Uh, I'll spend a couple minutes here and uh, it'll, it'll give you a good good start. Let's look at the versions involved. Uh, if what you're seeing on your computer isn't what's, what you're seeing on this video, then the first place to check is are you using the same versions? Uh, always a source of frustration to look at uh, instructional uh, material that, that isn't for the version you're, you're trying to learn. Okay, let's bring this up. Uh, First, we'll bring up a, a session I've already created. Uh, we will, as always, look at messages. Everything looks fine. We'll check the connections. Notice that I have the system, this microphone that's plugged into my sound card going into Arter. It's going into this recording, and it's also going into the uh, system so I can hear myself through the speakers. Uh, We want to always know where our files are, and I, I personally find it convenient to have one folder under my home directory just called Ardor Projects, and everything runs under there, and I'll show you where that gets set up um, in Preferences. Uh, the Miscellaneous tab, uh, put everything, all the new projects under Ardor Projects. Okay. For any given session, when we bring it up, start a new session, uh, we want to look at session properties and there we go. Uh, broadcast wave is what I usually use and 32-bit floating point. Uh, we set those up. If you look up here, you'll see the jack is currently set to 48 kilohertz. Uh, a little faster than before, uh, uh, but you can see that I have very low latency. Now let's let's actually try this. I'm going to right click in this area down here. This is the master uh, that everything's going to feed into, or most things. We'll get into some more complex operations later. But down here, these are going to be all my tracks. So I'm going to add an audio track. I'll call it Voice. We'll make it a stereo track. So there it is. And if you look up here, I'm going to highlight this track. Here is the channel strip for voice. I want to come up here and I want to make sure that the system capture that we saw in Jack is coming into this track in particular. And you see that it is. Uh, we'll set up recording. So now I'm going to be recording on voice track, uh, recordings armed. When I hit play, we will start recording this voice. And hopefully you can see that we are indeed getting sound, the sound of my voice uh, in this. I'll hit stop. There's no need to, uh, to keep that up. Uh, but th that's basically how it's done. Uh, right click, create a track. Uh, you can create uh, audio tracks or MIDI tracks or buses. Uh, we'll do buses uh, next, uh, but uh, name it whatever you like, mono or stereo. Up here, determine what it is you're feeding into that track. Uh, if you had a MIDI keyboard or uh, uh, maybe you're running hydrogen or a synthesizer uh, into that, uh, uh, you make the connections in jack. 
You click here for which connections go to which track, and that's all there is to it. Uh, again, uh, pretty simple once you once you know what to click. Uh, great. Okay, here's another example, uh, a little more complex, but not much. Uh, to to understand, here's the drum track as as we talked about tracks. It's called drums. It has no input right now because it's already been recorded, as you can see here. Uh, here's the fader. And it outs to the master. Same with this Rhodes. Uh, has no input right now because it's already been recorded. Uh, it's got a compressor hooked up before the fader. Uh, I can put plugins uh, before the fader or after and it's output to the master. I'm going to add an audio track, my voice. Uh, we'll call it voice. And we will, as we discussed before, uh, take it from the system microphone. Uh, I hope you'll trust that jack connections have been made. Uh, you can see my voice as I talk. Here. But the, uh, the thing I want to show you here is, is the use of a bus and how easy it is to set up. Notice the voice has input from the system, as we talked about, output to the master. No input, output to the master. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another track here, only I'm going to create a bus. And I'm going to call it uh, oh, Music. Now, I'm going to take the drums, and instead of putting their output to the master, drums out, so when the drums go out, it's going to the music in bus. Same with uh, the roads. I'm going to unhook it from the master and hook it to the music bus. Again, there's drums. Input is what's recorded. Output to the music bus. There's the roads. Uh, input's what's recorded. Output to the music bus. And now, in theory, all we're going to be able to uh, have going to the master is my voice. Voice going to the master. And the music bus going to the master. So watch how, how we can exploit this. Uh, how I'm recording for my voice. You can hear the music, you can hear my voice, but I might want to take the music down a bit. So it's easier to see my voice and by moving this one fader, uh, I can control any number of audio tracks up here higher uh, so that you hear easily uh, my voice and I can bring it back up. So that's how we use a bus. Uh, uh, we can, really handy, we can put uh, the effects on the bus uh, before and post fader like we could for any audio track. Uh, uh, and so these things do not always need to go out to the master as you've seen this example. Uh, I hope that uh, kind of makes, makes uh, some good sense. So here we'll. Okay, that's it. It's that easy. Channel strips, uh, 
watch what you're bringing in, watch what are they're going out. Uh, or again, right click to create a uh, audio track or a MIDI, MIDI track or a bus. Uh, and it's all just that easy. Thanks. Okay, that's it for this week. Stick with me as we explore all the really uh, great tools that are out there for music in a Linux environment. The people at Google, YouTube, whoever keep uh, telling me I should encourage you to subscribe to this channel so you might consider that. Otherwise, see you next time. Thank you.